What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this motherboard right here. This is the Asus ROG Maximus Z890 Hero. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now to start things off, this is an ATX motherboard. And as you can see, we have pretty much an all black design. We have the Maximus logo on the rear IO cover with that Polymo lighting, which we'll get into in just a little bit. We have a big hero logo here in the center. And then we have the ROG eye down on sort of the bottom half of the board. We have this pretty much all black in sort of silver accent color design. I think this is gonna look good in pretty much any build. Starting at the CPU socket, we have the new LGA 1851 socket, which is currently only gonna support this new generation of core ultra processors. This socket has the same dimensions and same center to center distance mounting for the holes as LGA 1700. So your LGA 1700 compatible CPU coolers will work with this socket. It is worth noting the small piece of rubber and flat end on the release latch the rubber makes it so you won't scratch up your heat sinks and the flat end makes the latch easier to press down and release. Surrounding the CPU socket, we have our power delivery components and Asus is making use of 22 plus one plus two plus two power stages with ProCool 2 power connectors, microfine alloy chokes and premium metallic capacitors. Now the power stages for the CPU are gonna be 110 amps and these power delivery components are cooled by three separate heat sinks all of which are connected by a heat pipe. The top corner of the board comes together with a large rear IO cover. This cover has a mirror-like finish on it, but will light up with Asus's Polymo Lighting 2 when you have your system powered on. Hiding in the top corner of the board, you'll find two 8-pin EPS connectors, which are metal reinforced. Moving across the top edge of the board, there are four 4-pin four headers. The two gray headers are for your CPU fan and optional CPU fan, while the other two are for your AIO pump and just a normal fan header. Also up here, you'll find your postcode display. Coming over to the memory slots, we have four DDR5 DIMM slots that support up to 192 gigabytes of 9200 megahertz memory. These slots have actually been redesigned and Asus is calling this NitroPath VRAM. The new slots feature pins that are looped to terminate at the very end, eliminating the resident excess section of the original design. Internal testing from ASUS found that the NitroPath DRAM design could lead to significantly increased headroom across multiple configurations. Coming over to the edge of the board, we have a three pin addressable RGB header, power button, flex key button, 24 pin ATX power connection, an eight pin PCIe power connector, a USB 3.0 Gen 2x2 header, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 header. The 2x2 header can actually deliver 60 watts of power delivery, but only when you plug in that 8-pin PCIe power cable. By default, it's only gonna be 27 watts. Moving down the board, there's a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, four SATA 6 gig ports, and a slim SAS connector. All of these are at a 90 degree angle, so they won't get in the way of your graphics card or other expansion cards. The addition of the Slim SAS connector is actually quite cool to see. Slim SAS allows you to connect U.2 and U.3 SSDs, and unlike traditional 2.5 inch SSDs, you can get these in capacities up to 60 terabytes. At the bottom of the board, you'll find the rest of your headers and connections. From left to right, you have your HD audio header, Alt PCIe mode switch, Thunderbolt 4 header, two more three pin addressable RGB headers, three four pin fan headers, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, two USB 2.0 headers, a water pump header, retry button, and your front panel headers. The bottom half of the board is essentially covered by heat sinks. The top heat sink is quite large and made for cooling off a PCIe 5.0 NVMe SSD. The top heat sink here has what Asus is calling M.2 Q release. So we just release this silver tab right here and pull out, and the entire heat sink as you can see, comes off. Now that reveals our top slot, which of course is a PCI Express 5.0 slot. When you install your M.2 SSD and you're ready to put this back in, all you do is sort of line up the latch, push it down, and then lock it into place and you're good to go. 
This top slot has what ASUS is calling M.2 Q slide. So we install our M.2 drive and we're ready to go ahead and lock this down. So if we lock this down, there's this little piece right here that you just slide over and it locks the drive in place. Super easy to do. And say you need to remove this, you just slide it back over and take out your drive. Removing four screws allows you to remove the larger bottom heatsink that covers most of the board. Once removed, we find five more M.2 slots. These are a mix of PCIe 5.0 and PCIe 4.0. The top slot here is gonna be PCIe 4.0, while the middle two slots are gonna be PCIe 5.0, and then the two slots that are closer to the edge of the board are gonna be PCIe 4.0. All five of the bottom M.2 slots have the new M.2 Q latch. It is a toolless locking system, and again, it's on every one of the bottom slots, and you just lock in your drive, and then you simply just press down and it locks right into place. If you wanna go ahead and take out your drive, you just pull on this little tab right here and it unlocks the drive. When it comes to expansion slots, you have one PCI Express 5.0 X16 slot, one PCI Express 4.0 X16 slot, which is X4 electrical, and then one PCI Express 4.0 X1 slot. That top slot is gonna be metal reinforced one thing you might have noticed about this board is there's no button to release our graphics card here. Now, don't worry, you don't have to like put your fingers down in between to get it. They have this new thing called PCIe Slot Q Release Slim. Now, just to show you, our graphics card is locked in. Like I can pick up the, don't do this at home, but I can pick up my whole board with my graphics card. Now, if I try to re like pull the graphics card this way, it doesn't come out. If I try to pull straight up again, I'm picking up my motherboard. But for some ingenious way, I don't know how they do it. If I pull the card this way, it just comes out. Not sure how they do it. Put our graphics card back in, lock in, and again, we're locked. But if I just, again, pull the graphics card this way, it just comes out. It's super ingenious. It makes it super easy. And again, we don't have space taken up on the board by a button. So I really like that. When it comes to the rear I.O., of course, we have a rear I.O. shield. And then when it comes down to your buttons and connections, we have a clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback button, HDMI, 2.5 gig LAN, 5 gig LAN, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, two Thunderbolt 4 USB C ports, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports, two more USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, Wi-Fi 7 antenna connections, and your audio connections. Talking about those Thunderbolt 4 ports, they will support Thunderbolt Share. Thunderbolt Share is quite new and allows super fast transfer between two devices and much more. If we flip the board over, we can see that ASUS has wrapped it in metal. This not only helps with rigidity of the board, but also helps cool components better. When it comes to lighting on the board, you're gonna get this lighting right here on the rear I.O. cover that's sort of like the ROG logo. Asus calls this their Polymo Lighting 2. And essentially you can just change the lighting behind it. So the color and effect that's happening behind this ROG logo, you can change. I'm not the biggest fan of like the toning down of RGB lighting. I would like to just have a lot more RGB lighting on boards like we had a couple years ago. And then if you don't like it, you can turn it off. But I do think this does look pretty good. Now, as we come to the end here, of course, I'm going to like this board. It's an Asus Maximus board. It's going to have all of the features that you want. But with this new line of Intel processors, you know, what all are we getting here? We, we kind of expect to see the new generation of boards come out and they're going to have different look and maybe some new connectors. But I think Asus has done some really cool things here. I think one of the biggest things is their Nitro Path DRAM on here. Essentially, they've redesigned the DRAM slots to give you more sort of overclocking headroom. And we actually tested um, a 6400 megahertz kit on this that probably wouldn't overclock much higher than that. But on this board specifically, we were able to bring that up to 7200 megahertz. Of course, we also tested new CU DIMMs on here and you just plug them in. They run at like 8200 megahertz, no problem. Don't have to do anything. So I really like the Nitro Path DRAM on here. I also like the ease of use features. The quick release for the graphics card is just like amazing. I don't know how they did it. Um, there's no button on here. It just, if you pull it one way, it comes out. If you pull it the other way, it, it's still locked in there. So I, I love that design. 
Obviously it allows for more room on the board because you don't have to put a button, but it also allows so you don't have to try to put your finger in between your CPU cooler and you know the side of the graphics card to release. All of the M.2 slots are toolless essentially. I would have really liked to see this bottom heatsink be toolless, but you have to remove four screws, but you have all of that there as well. Of course, with this new platform, you're gonna get Thunderbolt 4, love to see that. Um, and this board specifically has Thunderbolt Share, so I really like that if you wanna do super fast transfers between systems. You also have the Slim SAS connector, which just kinda goes unnoticed on this board. But for those who want really storage heavy systems, this allows you to install U.2 and U.3 SSDs, which can be up to 60 terabytes. Instead of trying to get like, you know, you only have four um, SATA ports here and then your five M.2s, like you could just do one big drive that is a slim SAS. So that's really nice to see there as well. Of course, we have a great VRM here. No issues with VRM or anything like that. You can overclock on this, no problem. Everything runs really well. And talking about overclocking, their AI overclocking makes things so easy. If you are a beginner and you pick up this board, Asus's AI overclocking makes it easy and it kind of helps you learn as you go along um, so that maybe you know down the line, you can really dive into the BIOS and do the overclocking that you want to do. Talking about the BIOS, of course, it's one of the best out there. They have added some new features. We have a full BIOS video here on the channel of this board if you want to check that out, but they have added some new features there. The only things I really didn't like, like I said, this bottom heat sink would have liked it to be toolless. And then if you do populate the middle two uh, Gen 5 NVMe slots, the top graphics card slot will move down to X8. That's not a limitation on Asus's part, that's a limitation on the platform. But beyond that, I think that if you want one of the best Z890 motherboards out there, this is definitely gonna be it and you are really going to be happy. Now, I will have links below to our full written review over at thinkcomputers.org that of course has all of our benchmarks and everything that you wanna see. Also a link where you can go ahead and pick this board up. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.